All right, so it's another maintenance day on the bus today. We are back in Arizona. It's very warm outside. It's about 105 degrees today, and we are going to be servicing the little air conditioner that we have that runs in our electronics bay. And so all it does is cool the batteries and the inverter, the charge controller. So we have a dedicated AC that just cools this area. And so I see it come up in the forums a lot. And this was kind of an experiment of how we got into just doing an AC in here rather than doing fans or some kind of ducting or a cooling solution like that. I, I thought it would be interesting to take the time to explain how we arrived at just using a small port, a small window air conditioner to cool this area down. So to be perfectly honest, cooling fans and that sort of thing was our initial plan. I thought there's probably a way we could figure that out. We could suck air in from somewhere and then push it outside and that would probably be okay. So the biggest problem that we ran into is that in Arizona, the asphalt temperatures can reach 180 degrees. So you can imagine how hot the ground is and trying to pull that air in to cool anything off didn't seem like a very good idea or didn't seem like a very effective idea. So that was one thing. The other thing is we'd have to figure out a way to do the ducting. So we'd have to figure out a way to get air both in and out of this area. And it's, ki it's kind of a sealed area. It has, um, it has rubber, uh, rubber everywhere and it does seal off and so we would essentially be exposing all of our electronics to dust and moisture and all kinds of stuff if we went that route as opposed to an air conditioner is designed to be a closed system it pulls air from within the room pulls it through the cooling coils and blows that exact same air into the space and so we could leave it as sort of a, you know, as a closed system. Um, so that was another benefit. The third benefit was actually cost. Um, buying a, you know, ducting and high quality fans and controllers and temperature monitors and all that was probably going to cost more than the slightly over $100 that we spent for the, um, just the little window unit fan. Now we did buy a higher efficiency one. We ended up, we made sure that it was Energy Star and that it only drew three to four hundred watts. And so all of those things came into consideration when we bought this. But we thought in the end, after we did all the research and considered all the parameters, because we live in Arizona and heat is a significant issue, um, both with the inverter, there's actually a page in the manual dedicated to both the output, so the output is significantly reduced, as well as in extreme cases, the whole inverter will shut down to protect itself thermally. Um, that as well as lithium batteries, there has been several papers that have been published on the effect of high heat on lithium batteries and it's, it's not good for them at all. In fact, in some papers, it's shown to reduce their life cycles by about half. And so we thought, given all those things and considering all those things, it would be wise to have a cooling solution that we knew we could depend on and that would actually work. And the air conditioner has been in now for four years and it has worked great. Um, we don't run it all the time. If it's in the 70s outside, we're not gonna run it. If it's in the 60s, 50s, we're not gonna run the air. It doesn't make any sense. And so we do have temperature monitors um, in here, both external and in our BMS, that tell us exactly what the temperature is and what's going on. The other added benefit of the air conditioner is it removes the humidity. So any humidity that finds its way in here will be removed and then there's a hole in the bottom um, where it you know, condensates and it can go down onto the ground. So we have been very happy having an air conditioner in the bay. Um, it's I got a lot of flack from, I'm in several solar groups and I kind of showed it around when I was first experimenting to it. And a lot of people thought it was ridiculous and that it was, you know, just a terrible waste of energy. But I, like I said, Energy Star mode, it uses about 300 watts. The space is so small that it only runs for, you know, a few minutes and the area is cool. And so it doesn't work terribly hard. And then on the other side, we have an exhaust fan that 
pulls the air from the bay and just puts it outside the bus. So the system has worked tremendously well for us, but it does require maintenance. And so that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pull that little air conditioner out. We're gonna give it a quick clean and then throw it right back in there. So this is our electricity, but we do have a, a 3D printer in there because that was the only place I could find for it. Oh, and my angel. Anyway, never mind those things. The air conditioner is in the back. You can see it's on now. It's nice and cool in here. It's about a hundred. We're in Arizona and it's about a hundred degrees outside and it is about 77 degrees in here. So it, it does a really good job of keeping everything cool. Um, and we try to service this air conditioner anytime we're home. It's a pretty simple process. And so I'll be doing that today. All right, so here's the back side of the air conditioner here. It is the Frigidaire, and I did choose this particular model on purpose because um, it remembers its settings and comes back on when you unplug it and plug it back in. So that was really important to me because I'm, at some point I'm gonna control this with an Arduino or with a, my home automation setup, and so I wanna just be able to shut the power off to it and then when I turn the power back onto it, I want it to automatically start back up. So, all right, so the way I've got this screwed in here is I've got two screws down there, one screw up there, and then another one in there, which is the hardest one to get to, but it's actually not so bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, and then it should pull right out, and we're gonna clean it. Now you may be wondering how we're going to get to that other one, and this is how. <laughs> Let's try this. Now we should be able to come out. There we go. All right. So this does have a drain at the bottom, which I gotta be careful for. So you can see behind it, um, let me get you in here. So you can see behind it is I put a little funnel there and that's for the drain, the condensation drain. And that's just so it goes downstairs or onto the ground. And um, in there is our electrical bay. It's gonna be hard to see in there, I think. But I'm gonna take a sweep or two and sweep all that out. We've been in some pretty dusty areas and so that has gotten pretty bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust that up and clean this whole thing out and that's part of the maintenance. All right so this is the actual little AC that we use. You can see it's really dusty so we're gonna give it a proper cleaning, hose it, hose the back down, uh, it's working great. We have temperature sensors down there that tell us what's going on and this little thing has kept that little area back there totally cool for the last, gosh, I think we've had it in almost four years now, but it's been great. Um, I think it was just over $100 for this unit and it does have a remote. That was the other thing 
was I can't reach these buttons when it's way in the back. So it does have a remote control um, that is a good little remote, but the biggest part when buying this was that when you plugged it back in, it remembered its settings. And I remember the description on this one said specifically that it remembered its settings. And also it has a um, eco mode, an energy saver mode which um, limits the draw to, I think, three or 400 watts. So it's not a lot of power, but it is a, a great little AC system for back there. So anyway, we'll start cleaning it. doesn't look terrible the one in the ones inside actually look much worse than this so I don't know what that says but um. We've mostly got it swept up and everything and now's a great time to inspect all our cells which I've already done to see if there's any swollen cells or anything looking like it's misbehaving. Um, I don't see any of that. It looks all to be pretty good. Um, so this, this pack has been extremely well behaved. I've been very happy with the performance of our battery pack. So my charge controller is over here. Um, I don't often get to see it because it's tucked way back in here. Let me see if I can, there it is. So that's what powers our entire array upstairs. Just one of these. And then of course our Victron Quattro is right next to it. These have been great. So no issues at all. So. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and put it back together get the air conditioner back in here I've kind of cleaned up this bay a little bit too just to get it all wiped up and everything and um, Get it get the air conditioner back in there and get it back on because it's like 105 degrees today So we're gonna turn it back on All right almost got it all the way back in now to get the other screw in I'm gonna to have to use a piece of tape because these are stainless screws and they don't do well with magnetic so let's see if I can get this guy in it's definitely through the hole so I'm gonna to try to give it a little spin let's see if I can get it to go in I think I caught it. Yep, got it. All right. Screw this one down. There we go. All right, it's in. So we'll go turn it on. And um, that should be it. So, all right. Start working. Looks like it's working good. 